everybody. It's Pastor Josh. Uh, I was wanting to do some devotional videos so we can explore God's Word together. I'm hoping to do these uh, several times a week. Uh, obviously, my schedule may not allow it every day, uh, but I, I do want to do these several times a week. Lord willing, and the creek don't rise. So we're going to start with one of my favorite books, um, the book of Psalms. Uh, if you don't know, the book of Psalms was um, pretty much the hymnal for the Hebrew people. Uh, people like King David um, and others wrote beautiful prayers and worship songs to be used in corporate worship and in private worship. Uh, and they are just a treasure trove of beautiful poetry, uh, sincere prayers, and very human moments dealing with the Lord. And they've always been a blessing to me. So we're going to start with one of my favorite passages in the entire Bible, the first chapter of Psalms, Psalm 1. So I'm going to read that and then we'll explore a little bit of it together. How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He will be like a tree firmly planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in its season, and its leaf does not wither. And in whatever he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And like I said, this is one of my favorite psalms. I have such fond memories as a young college guy. I was a part of a young men's Bible study, uh, which we went through Psalm 1 for several weeks and just really dug to find all the little gems we could out of it. And I just like to share some of the insights, um, some beautiful things from the book of Psalms and Psalm 1 in particular today. First, you, you may not have noticed it, but there's a lot of comparing and contrasting in this passage of scripture. That's pretty common in Jewish poetry, like the Psalms are. So you see a comparison between the unrighteous people who walk and stand and sit in different positions of wickedness. They're compared to the righteous person who is planted like a tree by the streams of water. You see the comparison between the righteous person prospering in whatever he does and the wicked person being like chaff that's driven away by the wind. It's just fleeting. Uh, it's insignificant what he does. You see the comparison between the wicked being unable to stand in God's judgment and the righteous person being known by God. Now this psalm begins with a negative example or three negative examples. Those who walk according to the counsel of the wicked, those who stand in the path of sinners, and those who sit in the seat of scoffers. Now first I want you to notice that there's a progression in their posture. They go from walking to standing to sitting. They're progressively becoming more comfortable in wickedness. They go from being led by wicked people to sitting in the seat of the scoffer, the mocker, those who mock God. They're now leading other people astray. And there's a caution here that we need to understand that if we're walking in wickedness, there is no neutral in the Christian faith. We're either growing more like Jesus or we're growing to be farther from him. And we see this in Psalm 1, walking, standing, sitting. But then the, the psalmist changes his focus to the righteous person. He's blessed or happy, in one translation would say, because he's not walking or standing or sitting in the places of the wickedness. Instead, he's listening to God. He's not listening to the counsel of the wicked. The Bible says that his delight is in the law of the Lord. The law of the Lord meaning God's word. We would say the Bible. His delight, he loves God's word. And he, we see how he loves it because he meditates on it day and night. Do you know what it means to meditate on God's word? I always tell people it's kind of like chewing gum. You just keep working it over and over and over. And so to meditate on God's word is to just to, to read it and to study it, but then to think about it and examine it and, and try to apply it to our lives. I can tell you as a pastor, um, just studying God's word, Many of the most amazing things that I discovered in God's Word weren't when I was just sitting with the Bible in front of me. It was, it was as I was walking to class or I was driving somewhere or I had some time to kind of think where I just had the, the things that I read and studied in my mind and I just kept thinking about them and thinking about them and praying through them. And oftentimes it was there where God would help me to understand some beautiful things in the text. And I want to just ask you before we move on, do you delight in God's law? Do you delight in the Word of God? 
God? Do you, are you hungry for it? Are you thirsty for it? Do you meditate on it day and night? Do you try to live it out? Because let me tell you what, the Bible is not just a book to be read like every other book. It's a book to be lived. So yeah, we should read it, we should study it, but the real test of whether we love it or not is do we act on it? Do we live it out? Now, did you notice the result of, of this man loving the Word of God, his delight being in the law of the Lord? He has a firm foundation. In fact, the psalmist says he's like a tree planted by living streams of water. You see, a tree that's planted by a river has everything that it needs to be healthy, to grow. Because of that, the Bible says that everything he does prospers. Now, we have to be careful with that word prosper. It doesn't mean that everything goes our way. It doesn't mean that we always win. It doesn't mean that we never face disappointment of any kind. What it does mean is that God actively blesses us in our work and in our ministry. Even amidst life's ups and downs, we're blessed because of our intimate relationship with God. That's really what it means to prosper. Then the psalmist ends this beautiful passage by pointing out that these two different people are going to have different experiences when they face God face to face. The wicked are going to be removed. They're not known by God. You know, the wicked often seem like they're winning in this life, don't they? They're often wealthy and healthy and popular and successful. But in the end, if you don't know Jesus, all of that means nothing. On the other hand, the righteous are often poor. We often have few close friends, and we often have to deal with trials and difficulties in this life. Yet in the final judgment, those who are known by God, they're loved and they're rewarded. One of the hardest things about being a Christian, I think, is we have to, we have to stop thinking about things in a human perspective. It isn't just about how much money we make or how good looking we are or how happy we are in, in a physical, material sense or how successful people think we are. Those things really are insignificant compared to this one thing. Does God know us and do we know him? Do we delight in him? Does he delight in us? And so who are you today? Are you the person that delights in God's word? Are you the person that delights in God, that knows him and that God is going to prosper and bless? Or are you the person that is walking according to the counsel of ungodly counsel? Are you, are you standing in the path of sinfulness? Are you sitting in the seat of the scoffer? I pray that God would bless you as you meditate upon his word today. May we be like trees planted by the streams of water. May God cause us to prosper and to produce fruit for his kingdom. God bless you. Have a great day.